Principal's Gap School with Miss Pam Rowland Griffin. And Miss Miss Rowland Griffin, mm -hmm. uh, could you explain your role here at Bulls Gap? Yes. Um, I have a dual degree. I have a degree in elementary education, regular ed, and then I also have a, a master's degree in special education. So at Bulls Gap, it's really nice because in sixth grade and eighth grade, I do I go into the classroom and we do kind of inclusion mm -hmm. with my students. So those classrooms, there are two teachers. And then um, I have a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade reading intervention group. And then I also have a portfolio group, um, which consists of children that are academically or intellectually challenged. And um, I have five of those students. And so what you saw today, or what you will see, is just my eighth grade bunch. And that is my portfolio group, plus my eighth graders that I have for reading intervention. So that's what we do. All Basically right. reading, yes. Okay, great. And uh, Ms. Griffin, as part of the Rural Off Grant, you received this dry erase table yes. for your classroom along with some other things. And stools. And, and stools, stools, yes. yes. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how you've been using the table in your classes? Yes. Um, I really enjoy this table a lot because it can serve a lot of different purposes. Um, even though it's a special ed classroom, within the special ed classroom, there is differentiated learning. And I have it all the way from pre-writing, pre-reading, to kids that have um, word recognition skills on the high school level but may have trouble with comprehension or vice versa. And so I've got all different levels. And it is so nice to be able to have centers and to be able to just walk around the room and see two different things going on and just eyeball it, you know, just observation to make sure they're on task, to see exactly what they're doing. I also use it a lot for progress monitoring, for spelling test, for graphic organizers, you know, group work. There can be four or five at a time. And then we also use it a lot for games. Mm -hmm. um, the higher level, um, I know some of the other teachers um, talk about using it for debate and outlines and that kind of thing, that, which would be a wonderful way to do it. So anyway, and the kids love it too. Plus, I mean, you can just do that same old, if you don't want to sit down, you can just come over here and stand up. Right. And that's really nice for my- To give them the option, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. flexible seating. Yes. Uh, plus the whole interactive aspect of mm -hmm. that as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We certainly do some, some fun things that seem to be really engaging. Well, we try. Students. We just try and make it fun for mm -hmm. them, you know. How's your coach helped you? My coach has been absolutely amazing. She is always here on Thursdays. Um, her central hub is the library. So I know she's either going to be there or she's going to be in the sixth grade language arts room, seventh grade or the eighth grade. Um, She's very personable, and I just feel like I can discuss anything with her. If I'm confused about something or if I have questions about, you know, how the money is spent or how it's allocated or how I go about it, um, I just feel like she does a wonderful job explaining that to me, and I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Last thing, um, do you have any future plans uh, to utilize the dry erase table or future plans um, to include more flexible seating? Or do you have any advice for other schools who might be looking to incorporate things like the dry erase table and flexible seating? Um, I do, but I'm not, I'm not real sure what exactly I envision. Uh, it's been really interesting, this whole process. Um, I notice now when I walk into a classroom, if it's just rows of desk, it, I feel kind of let down. You know, it's just like, oh, this is going to be so structured, or this is not. Um, and and I, I wasn't expecting that kind of uh, feeling. So I feel like I've learned a lot just by utilizing this table. Um, I do think, you know, there does have to be structure, and I do have to have, have um, some things, you know, like my tables that so I can do my group work and that kind of thing as well. Um, but, but I'm really interested, and this is another thing that my small group has provided, is we are going to have opportunities to go see other schools mm -hmm. and so I'm real excited about that because I, I you know this is new mm -hmm. as it 
in our area, especially for flexible seating and, and furniture and all that kind of thing. So I want to see how it's used successfully in other schools. And we're going to Sevierville in mm -hmm. February, so I'm real, real excited to see how that's done. Yeah, so I'm I, hoping I to get some to, ideas. To check that out and mm -hmm. um, to let you guys experience that mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and chat with the teachers mm -hmm. and just see how they're implementing it mm -hmm. as well. I think that would be uh, really beneficial. I think so too. And I think it's very, um, it empowers the students a lot to be able to to decide, you know, where they want to sit or how they want to sit, you know. Mm -hmm. So it gives I them that know. choice. All right. Well, thank you very much for thank your you. time, Pam. Thank and, you. And uh, thanks for showing us um, all all that you and your students are doing with uh, your new furniture. Thank you. We enjoyed every minute of it, and thank you so much for the furniture and the book.